Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready to make demand for your daily bread? Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, we have been talking about tithes and offerings. And, and yesterday, I was sharing things um, about offerings and different kinds of offerings. But then, remember, I shared something with you from um, Mark chapter 12, when Jesus, uh, this, this, this intelligent scribe had asked Jesus, what is the first commandment? And Jesus explained and, and told him what it was. And the guy said, made a powerful statement. He said, to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself is better than any kind of burnt offering and sacrifices that you give to God. And Jesus looked at the man and said, you are not far from the kingdom. Why did Jesus say so? Because he meant the kingdom the principles of the kingdom or the idea or the communication of the kingdom is already you have the understanding of it that's what jesus meant that you are not far from the kingdom when a man comes gets to that place where he understands these things then you know jesus told him you are not far from the kingdom because the kingdom had not come then see that now so jesus knew that this guy you will not have issues entering the kingdom because you already have the reasoning of the kingdom and i was telling you yesterday that all these offerings that god commanded was for acknowledgement why does god want you to acknowledge him so that he will have the right to direct your paths Listen to me, brothers and sisters. We live in God's world. He created everything. Your future, everything you will ever become, everything you will ever do before him that is right, is written already. So, in essence, it is foolishness of you to try to carve a way out for yourself. When the one who created you have already set a pattern, for the life that he wants you to live. And not just that, a life that he wants you to live, so he wants to squeeze you to live that life. No, it's a good life that he had already planned for you. The Bible says we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus, that, uh, that we should do those good works that he has preordained for us to do. He preordained good works for us to do. How do we get into those good works? By acknowledging him, then he will direct our paths. So God gave different instructions to the children of Israel for this purpose. Now, every command you see, especially commands that have to do with actions, physical activities, is simply for acknowledgement. So also offerings, offerings are physical activities. It is for the purpose of acknowledgement. If you don't understand this, I'm sorry, you don't know nothing about God. Yeah. So when, 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 when that man said to Jesus in Mark chapter 12, from verse, uh, I think from verse 30, 30 or from verse 29, when that man said to Jesus that, look, indeed, to love God, because God is one and there is none beside you. So to love him with everything you've got. Now, when he says to love him with everything you've got, he said to pay attention to him. Simple. Pay attention to him, acknowledging him. And then you see the result. I come in this year. You see the result of your acknowledging God in how you deal with men you see the the 
principle works this way. We walk with God acknowledging him and then we the iconisha. The result of our acknowledging God is seen in our dealings with men. Now take note, I'm not doing the traditional way of teaching. Oh, let's go to the first place God mentioned offerings and tithe. No, I'm telling you truth. I'm telling you truth. So every offering God, you see God command that the children of Israel should bring is simply for this purpose. To acknowledge God as God. He is the only God. There is none. And then number two, that their actions will put them in place where they will flow along with their fellow human beings. Yes, praise God. Now you see God tell them in, in, in Exodus chapter 23, and God began to instruct them concerning the different feasts. The first feast is the feast of um, unleavened bread, that's, that's Passover. Like, you know, God says that one is to remember the day you came out of Egypt. Try three times a year. Everybody must gather before the Lord. So the Passover, the second feast was the feast of harvest. Now that's when you bring your first fruit unto the Lord. I was talking to you about first fruit yesterday. You bring your first fruit unto the Lord. Then the third feast is the end of the year. That's the feast to acknowledge God. For the close of the year now you see these three things now this this is the children of israel see god commanded them straight up three times you must gather a year okay now why was god telling them to gather three times simply to acknowledge him so the first garden say you will acknowledge him that he's the one that brought you out of egypt so you sit down on that day and remember and recount the ordeal in egypt and recount how God brought you out and all the miracles he did in your life. Now, what's the purpose of that? Acknowledging God and keeping his testimony. You see, there are many families, there are many people who have actually experienced God. But how come the loudest that we have is what is recorded in the Bible. I'll tell you why. It's because of these patterns that God commanded them to keep. Now in those days when they gather together, well, they all gather wherever you are. As a child, a, 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 a Jewish child or a Hebrew child, wherever you find yourself, you will go home for those three feasts. You will gather. And so the first one, they begin to narrate. Now, now imagine year by year, they do this gathering. So children are being born to them. And then they take their children. As the children are growing up, they take them every year. And they all sit down and they begin to recount how God delivered them from Egypt. All the plagues he did. And crossing the Red Sea. All the miracles. Eating manna in the wilderness. They, they tell them, oh, look, you know, from, look, this is what, you know, you guys were not born as at that time. So this is what we, we see what happened. See what God did to us. See what God did with us until he brought us into this promised land. How we, how we crossed the river Jordan. How we crossed the Red Sea. Now we are in the land that God has given to us. He promised this land to our forefathers. Now what are you showing to those children? Now those children grow up. The older ones begin to die. And those children, this, the gathering is still taking place. And they still gather and say, look, our forefathers told us these stories. And man, you can see the excitement in their faces when they tell these stories. Granddad here saw uh, great-granddad who experienced it. Granddad was a little boy that time. Or granddad was not born that time. So they, that's how they keep this testimony year by year from generation to generation. And it's fresh because they tell it every year. And then the Feast of, of uh, Harvest, that's the Feast of Harvest. Then you bring your first fruit. So once there is harvest, there is a garden. And in that garden, everybody brings the first fruits to the Lord. Now, God demanded of that one. 
I'm bringing you to the point where he said, why he said in Malachi, you have robbed me in tithes and in offerings. So now you see the first fruit was demanded by God. When you gather that second gathering of the year, is the gathering when you reap your harvest. Now at that time, everybody will gather and bring the first fruits. And what are they doing when they bring the first fruits? Remember, they are not sending somebody to take it up to heaven. They are simply acknowledging that this harvest came by God. That's what they are acknowledging. This harvest came by God. And God said they must have a gathering. So it's not something they do as individual. Now, again, why is God saying that? Number one, to keep a testimony before him. Number two, to act for the people to remember to acknowledge him. And when you acknowledge him, what happens? He directs your path. Now, I can tell you easily how this works. And I pray you open your understanding. Listen, pass this message to as many people as you can. It is needed. Why is God demanding that they acknowledge him this way? I will tell you. Before man was created, God had created the earth. He has created all the angels. And like David said, he has given his angels charge concerning you to keep you in all your ways. Take note, the angels are to keep you in all your ways, right? Okay. Now, man is created and God begins to give instructions to man. And let me tell you this. Every instruction God was, is giving to man is to make man conform to a path that will suit the charge that God gave to the angels. Did you get that? He has given his angels charge already, okay? Now, man is here and God is now directing man. Directing man to do what? To walk in those paths where they will be assisted by angels every angel on earth is here for you the bible said they are created or they they have to work for those who shall be heirs of salvation today we have those who are heirs of salvation angels didn't start working with you when you got born again angels started working with you from the day you were born in fact, their job is to guide your steps until you get saved. Now, when you get saved, you come into another kind of relationship with them. You see that now? So, now God has given the angels charge so that he's giving man his own charge. The, the charge God gives to man and the charge God gave to the angels are not supposed to go against each other. So now, when God says, you will gather so when they gather like that, this is what usually happens. The counsel of the Lord is spoken in that gathering. When they gather to give their first fruits, a priest must be present. And the counsel of the Lord, I remember I told you yesterday, when they give their offerings, they always look for God's response. They always look for God's response. They are giving to a God that is alive, not to a God that is dead. So every time they give, they gather, first of all, the first gathering I told you, so remember how they came out of Egypt. The counsel of the Lord is given in that gathering. The second gathering is the giving of the first fruits. Now in that gathering, the priest must be present to receive the first fruit and pray for the people and give them God's counsel. The third gathering, the same thing, as they come to recap the year and to tell of God's goodness, the counsel of the Lord is revealed to them. So you see, it follows the principle that acknowledge God and God will direct your path. Brothers and sisters, these are elements by which the earth was framed. And there are things 
that's how that were commanded to and they were seasonal but there were things that god commanded that are everlasting the first fruit offering is an everlasting command why is it an everlasting command because it is a command that was given to the children of god to acknowledge god as their source so god says look when you come into the land as you reap the first harvest you must take out the best parts it's the first fruits and you will give it to the lord why are you giving the first fruits to the lord you will acknowledge god as god now um, there are people who now preach and say oh those things don't matter anymore because now we are in christ we are in the new testament hey the question you ask yourself is very simple because you have sense the question you ask yourself is when i say you have sense i mean you're intelligent the question you ask yourself i remember many many years ago i was in this uh, fellowship group and we're teenagers then you know so we we had this argument whether students are supposed to pay tight or not and so we're different people were talking and explaining why oh their parents must have paid tight already and giving to them and then why should they now pay tight you know people were arguing all this argument I, I was sitting down there and listening to them and while I was listening to them now I didn't know the Holy Ghost that uh, then I, I didn't know the Holy Ghost now I I was raised up um, believing Jesus as my Lord because because my parents did that work I, I was raised up practically in church you know what I mean by that so I I knew Jesus as Lord that's number one number two I began to see the real walk with God or people who really walk with God early in my life so I I, I just grew up to know that this is the way to go you understand what I'm of course a day came when i received the holy ghost and began you know my own journey with the lord you know on a personal level now but then even as young as i was then like, like i said i was a teenager and so we had this argument and so a thought just dropped in my heart and i said can i say something he said yeah i said okay does god bless students I said yes so should students expect that blessing from god they said yes and the, does god bless titus they said yes so if students want to receive the blessing from the lord why shouldn't they do the things that will bring forth the blessing if as a student i want god to bless me then i should get involved with the things that god have commanded that will produce blessings see and and i think that ended the argument that day now why did i say that like i mean this thing is practical if you want it then do the work praise god it's as simple as that so now you find people arguing today that oh we're in the new testament we are not supposed to tithe we are not supposed to uh, do all these first fruit offerings now they say those things because of lots of wrong notions in their mind wrong notions in the sense that and and, and remember, you remember i was talking to you about the serpent jesus said you shall take up serpents now the serpent came in beguiled them twisted their mind i told you that's how the serpent operates he doesn't oppose you, he doesn't fight you he joins you he he enters into agreement he, he behaves like he's on your side then he he begins to suggest things in your mind to take you far from the purpose and will of god that's how the serpent operates so if you don't know you will fall into that trap so people began to think um actually all these offerings people are just using it to enrich themselves so maybe uh, we should slow down on it no sir what is the truth about it what is the truth about it? 
So I've established that all these offerings, it is for one purpose. God wants us to acknowledge Him. And what happens when we acknowledge Him? He directs our paths. You see that? He directs our paths. So tomorrow I'm going to talk to you. We're really going to first fruit. And let's see how the Lord is going to help us because my time is up today. Father, I pray that the blessing of your word will rest upon every heart that is listening. That you open our understanding more and more to see you the way you are and walk according to your purpose in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.